Hello all. Um, so as we have finished covering all of chapter one, um, I know some of you are probably uh, uh, all caught up and waiting for chapter two. I'm going to wait till next week so everyone has a chance to get on board uh, and get fully familiarized with chapter one before we move on to chapter two. So in the meantime, then I would love to explain what your first written assignment will be for the class. So you eager birds that want to get a head start and do this now before some of your other assignments start rolling in, you can go ahead and start. And for those that don't want to start, uh, this is still a great information video on exactly what we're looking for for written assignment one. And remember, this is not due for a while now. Um, it's not actually due until Wednesday, October 14th, so you do have a month to do this, but like I said, I want to give you guys plenty of time to complete this assignment and to give it a try and then let me know if you need any help or have any questions. So here we go. Your first written assignment is an article summary. So again, it's not meant to be very difficult, but it's meant to get you guys familiarized with how to read a scientific article. Um, so for the topic, I'm going to post two different scientific uh, papers on Moodle. I'll make them very clear, and you guys just have to pick one of the two. You can have a look at both, but you're going to pick one, you're going to read it through, and then you're going to summarize the main points. And again, I want this to be easy, so I'm going to give you a template of exactly what I'm looking for. We'll go over the template on together, um, and all you have to do is answer the questions. And then you also need to add a title page. And again, I'm going to give you an example so you can learn how to make a title page. So the basics. Um, this is going to be maximum one page, so it shouldn't take you too long. You can do single spaced or double spaced, doesn't matter. Um, and then plus a title page. So you'll be turning in two pages total. One is a title page, page two is your summary. You're gonna use 12 point Times New Roman font. If you do use something else, I will dock points. Um, all margins are gonna be the uh, you know standard setting of one inch. Um, and the title page and your reference will be in APA format. And we will go over what that means and exactly how to do that. So the summary itself, this is exactly what I'm going to be grading you on. So you can see where you're going to get marks and where you might lose marks. So you're going to get half a mark for your title page. You'll get one mark for just telling me what is the purpose of the experiment. Why did the authors run this experiment? And then you're going to tell me what the results are or what are the main findings. And there can be multiple findings. Um, so there's two papers you can choose from. One has a little bit more findings than the other. But either way, you get one mark for putting all of the main findings. And then uh, the third full mark you're going to put is what are the implications of this finding? And by implications, what we mean is, why is this important? Or, you know, why should we care? Um, what does it mean? So here are the findings, and then this is how the implications is how those findings uh, relate to the big picture. So how do the findings relate to uh, what we know outside of just the study? Next, you're going to talk about what are the future directions for research. And for this mark, when I say future directions for the research mark, I want you to tell me what the author said. In both papers, the author will very clearly say a future direction should be this. And I want you to tell me what they said. Okay, so this is pretty much just saying for me to make sure you read the whole paper. And then the final big mark is critical thinking. So this is where you're going, instead of just reading the paper and telling me what they said, I want to know what you thought of the paper. And we'll go into exactly, uh, you know, on this uh, rubric that I have posted on Moodle, there's some examples. So this could be 
Maybe you thought of a different future direction that you want to talk about. Or maybe you thought they did something really well in their study and you want to tell me about it. Or maybe you think their study wasn't very good. So you can say it wasn't very good and then tell me why. Okay, so this is where I want to hear what you have to think about the paper. Um, so obviously, you know, there's going to be a lot of differences. Um, and if you are doing this with a friend who's also in the class, you know, we don't cheat, we don't plagiarize, um, but your res the answers for most of these will be the same across everyone, or they should be, um, but the critical thinking should always be different amongst different people. So even if you're doing this with a friend, make sure your critical thinking is different because I want to know what you think, not what your friend thinks. And then the final 0.5 marks is you just have to uh, do a reference for the paper. And again, I'll show you exactly how to do this. Um, and this is something that you're really going to need to know for in the future when you write uh, papers in class and stuff to avoid plagiarism. So like I said, check the rubric when you're doing this. Have it pulled up on the side um, because it's really going to help you get all the points possible when doing this assignment. Um, you can even copy paste the rubric into a Word doc and just like fill it out um, as you're going. Just answer the questions like that. It doesn't need to be in paragraph form. I just want to know the answers to my questions. Uh, if you want to write a paragraph, go for it. If you want to just answer the questions, also cool. Uh, just make sure it's clear which question you're answering. So really use that as a guide. I also have a picture here of an example title page of what I want. Um, so in the middle, it's just the title of your paper. So that's not the title of the article, but it's what you want to call your paper. So it can just be, you know, summary of this paper. Um, you could create a fun title if you want. It's up to you. Really have fun with it. And then your name and then your school affiliation, so Concordia University Edmonton. Um, and that's just, this again is preparing you for when you write a real paper in other classes. And then up on top, the header for the paper, you're gonna have the words running head, colon, and then the title of your paper again. And then you need a page number up on the top. Up on the top right-hand side is the page number. So again, just make sure your paper looks like this and you'll be grand. So now I want to go into citing an APA. So this is just a nice introduction to what APA is. You're going to hear about it a lot in psychology um, because APA actually stands for American Psychological Association. So this is really just a way to standardize how everyone in the psychology field uh, references things, how we format manuscripts, that kind of thing. Um, right now there's a 7th edition, but what I'm teaching you is mostly the 6th edition. Uh, the 7th edition really just has very minor changes. Um, so if you just need help with APA, you can always just Google citing in APA and it'll tell you. Now I'm not going to dock you if you cite in the 7th edition format. Again, it's going to be the pretty much the exact same. So don't worry about what edition, um, but also I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in these PowerPoints. So you shouldn't need to Google it, but if you do, obviously I'm not going to dock points if you do an updated version. Um, but the sixth edition is just as good. So what kind of rules does APA cover? It covers the kind of rules of what punctuation and abbreviations we use. Uh, how we present statistics and numbers in papers. So as you're reading the papers in the results section, um, if you look at the two papers, you'll notice that they're formatted in a very similar way. And that's thanks to APA. And then of course, how we present tables and graphs and numbers and all that fun stuff. And then finally, the most important part is how we cite references or the citation of references. So this is like the bibliography. And this is what we're gonna focus on. So what is a citation or a reference? And that's really just a way to track the author's research. Um, so it's pretty much saying, um, you know, this is where I got that idea from. Or, you know, so-and-so did this cool thing, and then you want to cite them 
So people that want to go read about that research more in depth can find that paper really easy. Um, so that's really what it's about. And like I said, it leads that reader to the cited sources. It's also fun for authors because we can see how many people have read our papers. Um, and, you know, the more we're cited, it makes us feel more special, whether we are or not. Um, so how do you do it? There's a lot of information online, or you can actually buy a physical APA manual. I think they have them at the bookstore if you really want them. You can also get great ones off Amazon, honestly. I just use uh, Google. You know, I Google it. Uh, my favorite website is actually for, uh, the Purdue University uh, APA uh, website. Um, and it's honestly one of the first or second links when you just Google citing an APA. So it's really easy, very user friendly. Um, and it's pretty easy of how to cite. So what you're going to do is you take the author and you do last name, comma, first initial, period, middle initial, period. And then if there's a second author, you'll do comma and then do the next author. And so on and so forth until you're done. And then in parentheses, you'll do year followed by a period, and then the article title. Now, the important thing for the article title is only the first word is capitalized. You do not capitalize anything else in the title unless it's a name. So like if you put Canada, obviously you capitalize Canada. So you only capitalize proper nouns and the first letter or first word. So just like you're writing a normal sentence. Uh, and then after the title, you put a period. And then you're going to put the publishing journal, um, comma, the article number. And the journal and article number will be in italicies. And then after the article number, you'll do a comma again. And then in normal font, so no more italicies, you put the page numbers. And then a period. Um, so let's look at an example. So here is a great example. Uh, so our author here is someone, first name is F, last name May. So it's May, comma, F. The year it was published was 2011, so that's in parentheses. The title is Methods for Studying the Use of Public Spaces in Libraries. Notice how only the first word is capitalized. And we have a period after the article title. Then we have the journal title. Uh, which in the journal title, everything is capitalized. And then we have the volume number, again, in italicized, um, comma, and then we have our page numbers. And notice there's no like P or page number or anything. It's just the numbers. Um, and you put the whole range. And again, not in italicies. Followed by a period, and you're done. Um, also, if you need help with this, again, Google's great. You can even usually put in a reference and say, like, cite and see if it looks right or not. Um, so there's more information about APA. This is not needed to do your assignment. So if you're only interested in the assignment, go ahead and stop here. If you just want to know more about the APA uh, manual itself, we're going to continue. Um, so the manual also tells you how you can cite different things. So I just told you how to cite journal articles and that's it. If you're going to cite anything else like a book or a website, um, or a chapter within a book, then you're going to actually do it differently than what I just said. So that's what the manual is great for. Also in text. So when you're writing a paragraph or a summary, you're not going to write out that whole long thing you're only going to cite the authors and the year. So an example would be here, we have say black cat chickadee females have been found to sin. And so then you're gonna cite who found that, right? So you're only gonna do the authors uh, and only their last names now. Uh, so this is Han, Chrysler, and Sturdy, and then the year. So you'll put 2013 and that's it. Uh, but then in the reference section, or the bibliography, whatever you want to call it, that's where you put that full citation, right? And so that full citation is what I want 
for the assignment, not the in-text citation. There is, of course, another way uh, of in-text citation. You can just put the author's names, like Han and colleagues, and then the year in parentheses, and they found it. So, like, you're talking about them instead of in the third, more in the third person type. Now, very important thing is in science, we do not use quotations um, generally. Every once in a while, we will. Here's an example. And when you do, then you put what page that quote is from. However, I do not want you to use uh, any quotations in this assignment or the second assignment. Okay, so no quotations in this class. So like I said, we usually do not use quotes. Instead, we paraphrase or we reword things in a different way, and then you cite it. Um, and that's really what science is all about. Um, here's some examples of how you would cite things if there's, uh, if it's a first citation, second citation, that kind of thing. Um, so first citation is the first time you mention it. Second citation is the second time you talk about it. And this is really just if there's a lot of authors. So if there's more than three authors, then the first time you list them all. And the second time you just list the first guy. And then you say at all, which means and more. And that's it. Um, so if, again, if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope this really helps you with working on assignment one.